If you came from my last video, then you already know that we're going to be building this one pager questionnaire. If you have not seen that video, what we're doing is we're building a page that's an onboarding screen, kind of, or a questionnaire that will navigate through these various uh, sections on the left and then intake data on the right. What exactly are we building in this video? Well, in this video, we are building out what I use as a process for every time before jumping in to build things in Bubble, I fill out some questions that help prime me to get very specific about what exactly it is I'm building for user interfaces, the data, and the workflows, which basically all three of those are the three-legged stool that everything in Bubble stands on. And uh, along with some conditionals that, you know, change and show off the interface, but that that kind of falls under interfaces. Um, this is just my perspective and how I see things. So, uh, and then if I'm working with anything special and if I'm uncertain about some things that I'm working on, help, my, help myself get clarity prior to jumping in. So in this session, what I'm going to do is you're going to see me build a UI very similar to this, and then I'm going to wire it up with all of the data and all of the uh, input screens, and then finally have it output a, a list, a to-do list of things to do that someone can use right after uh, filling it out so that when they go and do, do their session in Bubble, as they click these off, they can get those nice dopamine hits that, show, that you get when you complete a task, and uh, it's going to be great. So here we go. We're going to dive in right now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to grab two groups. We're going to drop those in. What we're working with is essentially um, the index page here. I'm just going to expand it out a little and go ahead and center that. And then we'll call this group left. And we're going to make this one a column. And then we'll just duplicate that. And we'll go with group right. Also a column. Uh, let's see what I'm going to do for these ones. So I'm just going to give them, say, like uh, 65, no, let's say 60 for percentage on both of these. And then we'll give this one uh, maybe 35. And that'll leave a little bit of room uh, in between for some spacing. So right away, what I want to do is I just want to get some color on these so that we can see um, what it is we're working with. And to do that, I'm going to add a background style. And we'll go something like this. So let's see. So the higher we go, okay. So there's that one. And then on this one, we're going to go less. Because if we look at the uh, mock-up we're working on, the left side has a lot more gray. Cool. So uh, then the one thing I want to do is on the top and the left of this one, I want to give it 20. Oops, that was, that was only two. And then here, I want to give it, and I suppose the bottom two. And then on this one, top and bottom, and the right, 20. And then on the roundness here, uh, let's go ahead and define it independently. So top left, uh, let's just go, let's go 10 on each of these. Bottom left, 10, and then top right, 10, and bottom right, 10. Cool. So that's going to, if we take a preview at our page here, we can see we've kind of got something that we're starting to work with. All right. And what else? Um, okay. So now what we want to do is drop in a group here, and we'll just remove the style. I'm going to call this uh, heading, and it's going to be a row, and we'll let that expand out. Uh, leave it as that for now, and let's put a picture in here, because again, uh, we're going off of this untitled thing here. So, uh, drop in an image, and... Got this nice icon that will go, let's say, I don't know, uh, 32 maybe, or 36. That looks good to me. And then one thing I want to do with this, so, well, 
we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, I'm gonna drop this one in. Let's go a little bit bigger on this this, this one. Bold it, and let's aim for. Let's go bold. Feeling bold. Now let's go medium. How's that? Yeah, I like that. I like that. And then we'll just drop that off there. Take away any of this extra space. Get this aligned vertically, or centered rather. And then here in our nice uh, thing on each of these, I want to have. Let's look at the group that surrounds them. So this group, I'm going to add a padding left, right, and top and bottom. I dig that. And then here I'll say uh, maybe 16. Well, that was odd. Oh, 160. <laughs> Makes sense now. All right, so what am I working with here? I have a bubble uh, pre-work. That's the official title. And let's see, I think I'm gonna up this a little bit, 26. All right, so maybe I want to Say 37 here and 58 here. Cool. All right, that did the trick. Now on this one, I'll just let it collapse down just like that. So uh, next up, let's go grab another group. Or let's see, can we use this group? I think we'll try. We'll try. Mm, no, the, this, the padding is not going to be fun to work with. We'll just drop in a new one. And then we'll call this one uh, item number one. And we'll make that a row. Allow it to expand, expand out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, rough in the details of this. And then we'll just copy and paste that down. So let's see. Basically, we're working with um, what I've kind of got here is in these uh, parentheses. It's like a, a short version and then the long version below it. So it uh, looks like we want to check mark and then we're also going to want to do something some kind of navigation uh, element so we'll get to that and let's start then with this group we're going to add a material icon here and that's just some uh, a plugin if you don't have that one installed uh, if you don't it's, it's a great uh, set of icons then we're going to look for check check please okay dig that one and then we want to we want to bring it down to like a light gray as it's kind of like default state. Okay, cool. Take that. And maybe we want to go like this size. Actually, I think we want to go a little bit smaller because next up we'll grab group and then we'll call this. Uh, Text. We're going to make this a column because you can see that we've got a column with uh, two pieces of text stacked on top of each other. Uh, might as well just you know make that nice and big, let it expand out, and then we'll you know tighten things down on it uh, after we've got things roughed in. Okay, so this piece of text. Let's remove the style, and then let's. Let's go, let's go medium. We bold on this one. We will try this bold. Yeah, I dig it. Uh, 14, just gonna leave that at one there. Take away the line height. And then here, we're gonna put in the word uh, goals. I like that, session goals. Goala. Uh, next up, so we're going to bring this down to regular, remove the bold, drop this down to maybe 12, give it uh, a line spacing of 
perhaps. And then we're just going to drop in this first question. What am I hoping to accomplish? And it's great because what I'm hoping to accomplish, you can see, uh, it's like matrixy or inceptionish, dream within a dream where um, we're working on something within the uh, thing of working on something. So um, here on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock this one over by, I believe, 20. So that lines up with that. And then I'll knock this one over. I just say 10. Let this one have a top margin of maybe eight. And I was just kind of guessing on these. But let's see where we're at. It's good to get it good to get it right before we repeat it down uh repeat it down the thing. Oh let's see, uh, let's make sure that this is fixed width. That should fix that. Yeah, cool, cool. Okay, so that's kind of looking like this for a start. And we can see that they actually have three states here. They have the active one, they have a completed one, and they have a not active or complete. So um, let's go and let's see. Go ahead and remove the minimum thing there. And what do we got? What do we got? We want to have a good amount of space there. We actually want to have a more space here. So I'm going to add that spacing on the bottom of this one. And then I'll go ahead and give like the top of this one. And then that way when I repeat this one, so let's just check one repeater before dropping the whole thing down. Well, that's way too much. What happened? Oh, oh I didn't take off the... Uh, I didn't take off this one. So let's see now. So we have goals. We're going to say add specificity. Okay, that's too close. And then let's go ahead and grab the question for this one. And then let's see with our spacing update if we're getting something that's roughly looking like that. Let's see. You know, they're quite far in on theirs. And I like it. So I'm going to do that for mine as well. So 30. Sorry, that was bottom. That's not what I meant. I meant to do. And then I also want to do 30 on the left of here. And I'll just drop this one over to 10. It's no big deal. Actually, it is. <laughs> so I'm going to do that trick again here. I'm going to let this take up 40. And then we'll let this take up, uh, let's see, I think I added 3% maybe. And then so that means bringing these ones over by 30. And just getting this all, and then it'll go right on down uh, once, we're, once we're ready. And it'll make that sound too. That's what your computer will do. Um, yeah, cool. I like that. I like that. It's some nice spacing. And I actually think um, kind of went 30. I'll call it good. Okay, so now we can repeat these ones down. And what we're going to do, let's see, item one, item two, item three, item four, Item five, and then we'll drop over these additional pieces of information. And then special elements 
if you have any uh, ways that you think about starting out your app and starting out your work sessions that might differ from this, please drop it in the comments. Let me know if there are any, if there's anything missing from this list and I'll bump it up to the top um, or up, we can upload it and people can also check the comments for additional things beyond this. And then maybe this, uh, this actual sheet that will be pushed to a page could be updated as well. And then we've got the dopamine giver. The best part about the whole thing is that when you uh, just smash your goals of what you intended for that session, you're going to feel amazing. We'll just start with this question and then we'll have it fill in the, all the rest of the stuff on the other part. Okay, cool. So, um, in this world where I am actually using this to run the show for what I'm doing over here, what I've been able to accomplish is my, for my user interface, I'm working on this uh, bubble session. I'm building a page that takes this intake questionnaire, outputs a checklist. I have no idea what that looks like yet, but we'll get there. Uh, user interface. So we built a left-hand nav. Uh, it's not a functioning nav. It has no workflows or data associated with it. So um, actually, let's do that. Let's go ahead and associate some data plus the workflows that when each of these groups is clicked, then we'll see things get updated. So let's make that functioning UI uh, in this video. And then after that, we will uh, we'll take a pause between videos. So uh, what I'm going to do is I am actually going to use something called uh, URL query string parameters to control the navigation because I would like it so that, so I could also use states. States are very popular. So we could go and we could, you know, maybe on this left-hand column, we could set some custom states and it could be item one and yes or no. And we would have it have a value of no. And then we would do the same thing for the other ones as well. Yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. And it's like, which one are we on? Uh, or we could actually just have it, we could, um, we just have it have text values and just say one or numbers even uh, and call it a nav item and go numbers one, two, three, four, five, et cetera uh, for this. And then just depending on how that uh, number gets updated, we could change these states. But I would like it so that if anyone who is a bomb developer out there and they're on their Android phone and they're driving in the back of an Uber because they're super important, going from one place to the next, and they want to use the back button uh, on their phone as they're filling this out, then I'm going to opt for query string parameters. So how do we do that? Well, query string parameters basically means that when this page is loaded, I'm going to give this a new default of uh, step one. And then, so when the page is loaded, no, that's not what I want to do. Uh, basically, when someone comes to this page, yeah, 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 that is what I want to do. When the page is loaded, and let's see. This indexed, I'm going to send a parameter. And our parameter is going to be nav. And our nav is going to equal step one. And we're only going to do this. We're only going to do this when get URL from data. The nav parameter is empty. So actually, nothing to do with uh, nothing to do with this. We're going to delete this. We don't need it. Uh, okay, cool. We're kind of playing with we're playing with data in a special way. We're playing with it in query string parameters rather than uh, states. Is how I chose to do it. So I was actually saying create data that holds the five answers, display them, list of data, 
a state variable for navigation. So I've actually changed that to a query string variable for the navigation because I like to uh, note my, uh, let's see. I like to uh, I like to note where I'm at by using that so that the URLs uh, can change on on the one same page. Cool. So let's go and let's actually preview what that looks like. And here you can see well, here you can see in my URL that I loaded this page in this it added this nav equals step one to the uh, because I was loading it with this as empty. And so it added this, or it, it brought us to this page where this value would be true. And so if this value is true, now we can go and we can start work on, so I'm working on the user interface. I have conditionals displayed that the UI is updated. So let me go and uh, update this UI. We've got two colors of green that we wanna work with. And so we're gonna go with kind of like, uh, let's see, That looks really good. So I'm just gonna, well, yeah, call it good. Okay, there we go, that's what I wanna do. All right, so when, get data from, pre, uh, when the nav parameter is step one, what I wanna do is change this icon color to here. Again, this could be accomplished with state variables, so you could run a workflow uh, that changes the state variable. We're running a workflow that changes the query string parameter in the URL. It's actually, you can think about it almost as the same thing. Like the state parameter the, uh, that you create here, uh, the custom state, when you add that, like you're adding it in this little box right here, right? But that's the like an imaginary box that Bubbles made up to like hold stuff. There's also this imaginary thing, but it's real. I mean, sort of, it's like virtual. It's called a URL string. <laughs> I mean, it's just literally, it's like a way that's decided to do something. And here we're just saying uh, you could have a thing called nav and then you can give it a value. Here we're just saying up in our uh, URL, we're just gonna store that. So it's literally the exact same concept, not to confuse anyone. Um, again, I just like it because I get a back button available on Android devices. Uh, good best practices, in my opinion, for these types of things. So, um, unless your app has nothing to do with uh, mobile at any point in time, then in which case, uh, have at it for state variables. Um, cool. So, and then I will take. I will have a state variable that says completed. And I am going to tie that to, yeah, I'll tie it to the top level here. So I'll say uh, group one, complete, and that'll be yes, no. And then the default will be no. Group two, complete. Group three. And so what this one is going to track, group four, is, and group five. And we've already completed our way through it uh, because I'll note on the, and I'll just set default all these as no to start with. I'm noting on here that you can see there's three different colors. There's the one that's active. There's ones that, yes, you've already done it. And then there's ones you haven't touched yet. So that's how the, the UI for this is gonna work. Okay, cool, cool, uh, I dig it. So let's see, what do we want to have happen when someone loads the page? Okay, cool, so I've loaded this page and it just so happens that the, the URL is kind of hidden for this app, but I'm on step one and it recognizes that, so I'm here, cool. So next up, let's go ahead and, and add a workflow. So. If I refer back to here, I'm now working in workflows and I'm changing screens via state variable. So this is actually via a query string parameter, uh, which is a state variable that's stored in the URL. Same difference, right? Um, 
hopefully expanding expanding minds uh, and those types of things. Okay, so this G, this big G, uh, G item one, I'm gonna make that whole thing clickable. So when this is clicked, uh, what I wanna have happen is navigation, we're gonna go to page, we're gonna go to this page, and the parameters that we're gonna send for the nav is going to be step two. All right, step two, amazing. Uh, so that means that this one, what we want to have happen. So let's see, to find another conditional, when the index is group one complete is yes, then the icon color, we want a different color green here. And so actually let's go ahead and just set up all these conditionals on all, on all five of them. Hello, is that, okay. So let's see what do we got here for this UI. It's kind of like this gray, more like grayed out one. So that's like maybe this color. It's still greenish, call it good there. Okay, so when it's complete, it's yes. Uh, and we'll call it that it's complete when uh, we've actually stored some data in a value related to it. So we'll wait to activate that state until we get there. Cool. Um, so what we want to have happen here is we're going to run this workflow. We're going to go to page step two. And we're not going to say that it's complete because we're actually, there's two, there's two parts of this navigation. You can navigate here by just clicking any of these. And then you can navigate over here by clicking the continue button. And that one will actually mark something as complete or not, which will um, have to do with this state here. Got it, got it, got it, cool. So uh, let's go ahead and just take this workflow and we'll just get a bunch of these on there. Five of them to be exact. And then we'll go group group two, group three, whoops. I did I miss three, I missed three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So here on this uh, number one, we wanna go to step two. Number two, we wanna go to step three. Number three, we wanna go to step four. And number four, we wanna go to step five. And if we click on, let's see, if we click on this, we'll just uh, have it stay on step five for now. Haven't thought that far ahead. Uh, I did a good job filling this out, but not perfect for sure. Okay, so let's go ahead and see. Well, let's, let's now, uh, let's take this copy with conditional expressions, and then we'll just go ahead and paste with conditional expressions, paste, Paste with conditional expressions and paste with conditional expressions. And last one. Okay. So now let's check these. And this we're going to put as two. This we're going to put as three. This we're going to put as four. And this ties exactly to those workflows that we just built. Right? So if that's clicking, then amazing. Um, and then we need these ones to be, let's see. So this would be the two three and this is building a bubble folks this is uh this is how what it takes to build apps and uh, prototype them very quickly uh, reasonably quickly anyways because after a day's work you might be able to completely customize or an afternoon's work rather uh, I think we'll be able to complete this in about an hour and a half time hour and a half time um, So I'm not sure, let's see, what happens when I click one? Oh, when I click one, it goes to two. Actually, I, I totally set that up wrong. Why did I do that? I have no idea. If you caught that earlier, you're amazing. Because uh, for some reason, I was using it as a, an advancer. So three, there we go, brilliant, all right. Okay, so now we can see it appears to navigate as we should like. And uh, I'll just note, we just clicked on number four here, and I'll show off this URL. So it's updated step number four, so click number five, and we've 
gone to nav number five. So the state has changed, the state variable that is also a query string parameter. Uh, cool, so the other thing that we'll wanna do is we'll wanna build a UI over here and we wanna tie that to those. But we'll take care of that in the next video. Amazing job, hang tight for this one and I'll see you in the next video.